Right. Um, uh, Arsenal fans will, will remember in the past when um, when City were in the position that Newcastle were, and they were the resurgent force that they came and took sort of several of Arsenal's players. You know, Adebayor, Torre, Clichy, Nasri. Do you have any fear of that situation repeating itself, or players seeing the money on offer, or do you think you've got a group that? value what you have at Arsenal and the project you're you're building here? No, I think um, I think players should stay at football clubs when they have um, when they feel that they belong somewhere, when they feel important to it, when they feel value in every single aspect and when that's the case, normally players want to stay. When players start to decide something else because they need something different in their futures and, um, and that happens uh, with any club that has the financial power to convince anybody or or has all their capacities. Sometimes it's not a financial power, sometimes it's a, a sporting reason, sometimes it's a family reason, something it's a problem of adaptation. There are many different cases. One of, one of the players who's been linked with, with Newcastle is Nicola Pepe, who's struggled a bit this season for minutes. What would your message be to to anyone interested in Nico and what's his, his situation at, at Arsenal right now? That, that we are interested in Nico performing the, at the level that he can do. And uh, he had some really good moments since I've been here, some moments where he hasn't participated that much, like everybody else. It's part of football and it's part of the role that, uh, that you should have at any football team. There's no thoughts of entertaining any, any offers for him? No, and it's not the moment to talk about that either. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Move on for a newspaper section, 10.30 Friday night. Gary? Hi, Mikel. Um, can I also ask about Pepe? Obviously, he started. He said at the end of last season he was showing more consistency, and and he, you know, he wanted to be the best he was. But he's only started five games, and none of the last four. D- does he need to show you more in training, perhaps, than Emil and um, and uh, Bakayo? No, Nico has a very specific qualities that. Um than when he can put them in place, um, they are magnificent. And we have talked about consistency. It's not only about that. Sometimes it's the coach that um, that makes a decision based on other qualities that are necessary on the day or in the game plan or whatever it is. Uh, and Nico needs to try to do what he's doing and, um, and even raise the level because that's what we want because then the team will be better. When you say the coach has to decide, does that mean he doesn't fit in in your system? No, is that uh, there are only 11 players on that pitch. And when you have 24, there are another 13 that they don't play. So uh, then, yeah, who makes the decision is the coach. Is that he's not training well, no, but at the end you have to decide between two or three or four players. And, um, and that's it. Have the club had value for money with him? Well, we will see that. Um, in recent, in the next few seasons, um, if he's capable to achieve what we expect from him, um, but that's a difficult answer. Not only with him, with any player. When you say next few seasons, does that does that mean you? Because he's only got, I think, two or three years, contract years left on his contract. Are you are you then thinking you're going to allow it to run through like lacquer? Or that's still a lot, and you've seen players uh, changing completely and um, and even during the, the season having completely different performances that can reach that um, the value for money question is very particular if it is, this is just for individual performance or you put their collective performance too because to pay money for a player and then if you are not in Champions League is that value for money it's, it's difficult to answer Gary thank you Michael thank you only John Hi, Mikel. Nice to see you. I, I was just, um, can I kick off by asking you, Eddie Howe, we're, we're told, could be on the touchline on, on Saturday. Bearing in mind um, the, the, the issues that Arsenal had with COVID at the start of the season, are you a bit surprised that he could be back just eight days after testing positive? Again, that's where we have the regulators, so I'm sure they will be aware of all the protocols that they will follow. I don't know every single detail, but uh, I'm sure if he's on the translate, it's because um, he's gone through everything necessary and um, and he will be entitled to be there. Yeah. You wouldn't have an issue with that if you know if you reported having symptoms a couple of days earlier than actually testing positive? 
Well, again, I have to know every detail, but that's why we have our regulators to, to go through everything and make sure that if he's there, he's safe for everybody to be fair. And I don't see anything uh, happening if, if that's not the case. Okay. Can I just ask you about o Oba? O Oba's been great for you overall this season, but it, 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 was there a bit of a frustration, I think there probably was amongst Arsenal fans, that basically didn't really take the, the game by the scruff of the neck, on, uh, didn't make an impact um, on, on, on Saturday. Are you, are you still, you know, are you still looking for a bit more from him, to, you know, find, in terms of consistency? He's been so we, good needed, we needed more from um, from the team um, at the weekend when the game changed um, and we had a period of 15, 20 minutes in the second half when we struggled and the game um, just um, got away from our hands and uh, it's not something about individual, it was about uh, the collective. No, sure. The, the, the formation that you're using right now, you know, you, you've been using it 4 one 4 one um, uh, 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 and, diff and different issues with that. Is that getting the best out because it's allowing Laka and Oba time together on the pitch? Is that getting the best out of them? Is that the sort of kind of the best way forward? For we can uh, we can play this information uh, with different players, and then um, obviously the shape and and the teams look different because the qualities and how they cohes and complement each other um, are different, and um, and we can vary one or two things or one or two players and and do it in in different ways, and and that's a positive thing about it. Yeah, those two spark off each other, don't they? Well, I think they have a special chemistry between them. You can see that uh, it's not only on the pitch, but outside the pitch as well. And um, and they provide the goal threat uh, that the team needs as well. But uh, we have other ways as well to attack, other ways to be dangerous. And um, and we're always looking for, for ways to combine that. Is that sort of partnership, you know, really important to the dynamic of the, of the team in terms of, you know, not just on the pitch, but the way they kind of spark into life other players? That's another alternative that uh, that we have. Obviously, it has worked well in in recent weeks, and um, and we have other alternatives as well to to make it work. Yeah, I'm just going to ask you one more about the Newcastle spending, if if I may. They're obviously probably going to go for it in, in in January. Just does another new competitor like that often, you know, can it be a good thing? Can it raise the level? Um, you know, you have obviously involved at Man City. Does sometimes that raise the level? It's going to raise the level for sure, um, because the ambition, first of all, at the club, it will be there. And when the ambition is there, normally um, the club is going to is going to make decisions to fulfill those ambitions, and then the level is going to raise. But that's the beauty of this league and what happened, uh, bringing new players, bringing um, improving even um, the way we sell the product in the Premier League uh, to a much broader level um, has the consequence that. Uh, that we are in the best team in the, in the best league in the world, and, um, and we have the best managers and the best players, the best facilities, and and that's part of it. It is the positive then that you know teams like Arsenal and even indeed yourself, you then have to respond and absolutely, kind of, yeah. and the demands will be better, so we have to be better and we have to find the right resources and ideas and um, and commitment uh, to go another step forward. Brilliant! Thanks so much, Michael. Good luck Saturday. Thank Thanks, everyone.